Now, in terms of our growth outlook, we project Malaysia to expand at a moderate pace in this year and next year. So 2023 growth is 3.9%, uh, 2024 growth is 4.3%, and our, our growth for this year is actually 0.4 percentage point lower than our previous forecast. And the reason for this is, should come as no surprise, uh, lower global growth this year than, than last year, so anemic global growth, uh, weak external demand, and we can see that in Malaysia's exports numbers which contracted by 3.3% and 9.4% in the first two quarters of, of this year. Now, one interesting finding, a new finding is that, so we know Malaysia is sensitive to, to changes uh, in, in external demand, but how much so? Especially when it comes to some of its largest trading partners, uh, so, so China and the US. So we estimated that the one percentage point fall in the US growth rate could reduce Malaysia's growth by 0.82 percentage point. And a one percentage point fall in China's growth rate could reduce Malaysia's growth by 0.45 percentage point. So this is how sensitive Malaysia's growth is to US and, and China's. You know, but it's also important to keep in mind it's not just external factors that weigh down on Malaysia's growth, it's also domestic factors. And what are some of those? Uh, well, first is simply just pure sort of accounting, if you will, base effects. Because growth was high last year, because of base effects, growth registers lower this year. Uh, that's one. Second, extreme weather events. Uh, hot weather affecting agri agricultural output earlier this year. Uh, so that has an implication. And keep in mind that most rice production in Malaysia is concentrated in northern Malaysia. So extreme weather events can have a, a disproportionate impact on, uh, on, on agriculture, rice, and then food security. And BNM had also flagged plant maintenance in the mining sector as a temporary factor that, that affected second quarter growth and hence growth this year. Uh, but let's also keep in mind that there are dampening effects on spending growth from monetary policy normalization, especially on interest rate sensitive sectors. And one important statistic to keep in mind is that Malaysia has the second highest household debt in the region uh, after Thailand. So the lagged effects of monetary policy uh, is, would, would be expected to have an impact this year. So if I were to step back and summarize 2023, uh, so 2023 for Malaysia was basically an economy that was driven primarily by domestic demand, uh, where external demand took a back seat. But it's also important to keep in mind that during good times, uh, Malaysia benefits from positive spillover effects from higher global growth and stronger external demand. So it, it cuts both ways. And indeed, we project stronger, um, as you saw in the previous graph. So we project stronger growth next year of 4.3%. And this is very much based on better external prospects, a stronger global growth, uh, higher oil prices, uh, stronger domestic demand domestically, higher number of approved investments, tourism that is bouncing back, improvements in the labor market, and overall easing inflation. So indeed, 2024 underscores actually an improvement in growth momentum relative to 2023. So that's all I wanted to say about growth. Uh, again, keeping in mind that the benefits of growth have not trickled down fully. About half a million households still remain under the poverty line. Uh, real estate and construction output levels are still below pre-pandemic uh, levels. But there's a, next year should be better than, than this year.